I'm saying you ain't finna come over my house and, and you know be feeding me to my mattress. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Editing Rochelle here. So listen, in the last vlog, I actually missed a couple of clips. I, I don't know if it was like a glitch with the software. Um, you know, I know that I did not go back and review the vlog in its entirety. I normally do that, but I'm gonna be honest, girl. I had had that blushing geisha from, uh, <laughs> from uh, Raw Sushi, cause I literally edited the vlog uh, after I had been drinking and that might've had a little bit to do with it. But anyway, girl, so what I'm gonna do with this vlog, because those clips were missed, I am going to start the vlog off with the clips that were accidentally deleted from the previous vlog. And so I think you guys will enjoy the message and the editing as well. I don't wanna ramble too much, girl. So uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this vlog and uh, roll that beautiful bean footage rock. this in the vlog but I'm re-recording it because I don't know I didn't want to sound like a, a hypocrite or judgmental so I'm I'm like you know what let me just re-record this so in the vlog or a part of the vlog I was saying that I was listening to this lady and her name is Stephanie uh, Perry and Stephanie Perry is a she was a professional in corporate America I think she had a background like in banking and she's basically found her way out of corporate America and now she's a professional house sitter. And so um, she really talks about finding, you know, basically uh, like no, I don't know, I think she calls it like no job or something, basically like encouraging black women to leave corporate America. And you know, like letting you know that you can still make a living, a comfortable living without making money in the traditional sense. And I just thought it was so interesting because what she talks about is a lot on the lines of what I talk about on my channel. And so she was just saying how, um, you know, with with uh, black women, you know, we, we experience more trauma in the workplace. And then she had another lady on her show, her name was Dr. K Kimori um, Morrison Sands or something like that. I'm gonna link the interview below so you guys can go see it. But anyway, if it's anyone out there that's looking for a sign if they should leave their job, this is your sign. If you get up every morning and you cry on your way to work and then you crying again when you get in the parking lot, this is your sign that perhaps it's just time to, uh, you know, abort mission. And so, 
what I was saying earlier in the blog is like, you know, we, we're just going to have to scale back a little bit on shopping and stuff like that. And then I was like, I don't, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite because, you know, I do shop on sales at ASOS and stuff like that. Now, guys, the stuff I buy is not expensive. Y'all see that. But I don't want to be like, uh, you know, y'all preaching, saying don't shop and stuff. And in every blog, you guys are seeing me opening something, even if it's not the most expensive thing. Um, and so what instead of me just saying not shopping, if you know that ultimately you want to leave your career and you want to do things that are not in the traditional sense of working like this lady, she was saying that she makes a living off of YouTube. She said she makes about I think she said four thousand a month or forty four hundred dollars a month on YouTube. And then she has coaching classes that teach you how to become a professional house sitter. And, and guys, right now, she's not even in America like she gets to travel and travel the world because that's simply what she wants to do um and so um i think i lost my train of thought but that's okay um so yeah girl like i was saying she travels the world for a living okay and so because she travels the world for a living um she kind of planned that out for herself and so her plan is to move to costa rica anyway um what i want to say is this like if you know that you are ready to leave corporate america or you're just ready to leave leave work in the tra traditional sense two things that you're going to have to probably face number one uh, people are going to be judgmental because for the most part we are all conditioned to have a traditional job you know whether it's corporate america blue collar white collar hospitality whatever it is for the most part we're conditioned to have a new job so you're going to face a lot of judgment as far as that's concerned and then number two if you really are if this is a journey that you want to take you're gonna have to save and um i'm not gonna sit up here and be like girl don't don't be going to marshall's and don't be going to ross but what i will say is like you know maybe slowly cut back on some of those things um i'll tell y'all a quick story time i used to work for at&t i think you guys know that and at&t is a it was a great company it was it was fun because i, I had great co-workers and, and customers but at&t was also one of those companies where when they're ready to get rid of you they're going to get rid of you and it's nothing that you can say and do i started feeling like they didn't want me there anymore and i didn't just sit back and wait for anything to happen you know i just started uh planning my escape I think that um, I had decided maybe, I want to say June or July, that I was going to leave AT&T. And so it took me three months to save up $14,000. Now, I know that that's like a huge, uh, that's a big chunk of money. But guys, I worked in sales. And because I worked in sales, you know, I really leaned on my uh, commission and I saved everything. I stopped shopping. I scaled back on a lot of things and I was able to leave. And so my leave date from AT&T was October the 1st. And girl, I was gone by October the 1st. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I just wanted to give you guys some encouragement for those who are just over just over the whole corporate America thing or, or just the work thing in general. You know that there perhaps is a way that you can um, you can make it and you can make it on your own without, you know, having to be in somebody's office or in somebody's, um, you know, organization, if you will. I would strongly encourage that you head over to Stephanie Perry. Again, her, her, her YouTube name is Stephanie Perry. I'll link everything below. And guys, just watch some of those videos because it's like she's so encouraging. She's so motivating. And she does make you feel like you can rule the world. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I think for me, listening to her videos was reassurance that I am doing the right thing. You know, um, it's just that with, with, with what I do and you know, with not working a traditional job, girl, y'all, people be judging, you know, because that's all they know. And so if they see you doing something, you going against the grain, they're immediately going to try to put you back into that shell. But anyway, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I did want to tell y'all that. I am over here working on this wig, girl, baby. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you, y'all, this part on this wig was so wide. So I kind of had to finesse it a little bit. Cause I think I put too much foundation on the part. So I had to kind of tighten it up. Let me look and see. All right, that's, that's better. So I'm over here finessing the wig girl. We're getting ready to film a sponsorship. Let me close my wig. I mean, time to close my wig. Let me close my robes. Girl, so y'all listen. 
I'm getting ready to close to uh, film a couple of sponsorships. So y'all, it's probably just going to be like a, um, it's probably just going to be like a, uh, you know, a content day or whatever. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm look Okay, good. I was trying to look and see if the battery was, was good. But anyway, y'all listen, can we talk about dry beggars? Can we talk about dry beggars and manipulators? This guy on, on TikTok. And his TikTok is pretty much saying like he was always taught to not allow people. Um, like if you know someone and you know that that person has a need, never put them in a position to actually ask for what it is that they need. And I agree with that for the most part. But guys, y'all know that I am a re recovering undercover over lover. OK, meaning like. I want to always help. I want to always fix stuff. I'm a nurturer. And so, y'all, I used to be the victim of dry begging. And a dry beggar is someone who they, they'll call you most of the time. They don't even ask how you're doing. As soon as you pick up the phone, this this what they do. Or you know the people had called me and told me that they're going to cut the lights off. They don't say hi. They don't say how are things going. They just immediately go into their spiel. And so I used to immediately be like, oh my God, what, you know, what, how much do you need? And I was immediately sending cash app and Zelle, whatever. I don't do that shit no more. You can call over here and dry beg if you want to. You're going to walk here, but you're going to limp back. You know what I'm saying? And so let me just give you guys some tactics for the dry beggars. If you guys ever get a person that calls and dry begs you, after they say they whole spiel, this is how the conversation needs to go after they call and they, girl, I don't know what I'm going to do. They said I need four new tires for the car. And they had said that the insurance is they tuition due, girl. I don't know what I'm going to do. This needs to be your response after the dry begging. That needs to be your response. Don't say nothing. Don't do nothing. Just get really, really quiet. It's like they're always in a position of need. Always. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. They always need something. Always. And don't never have nothing to give. And then another thing that I learned about the dry beggars, girl, when they can't, when, when their initial, when they ask you if you don't, you know, immediately offer if you give them that uncomfortable silence, a lot of times they'll cry. Girl, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Ah. Oh, they said the light's gonna be cut off tomorrow. Ah. This got an eviction notice. Ah. I don't have no food in the house for the kids. Ah. They about to kick the children's out of daycare. Ah. I don't have no gas to get to work. I guess I'm gonna have to sleep in my car tonight. That it there are certain people who have a PhD in bagology, dry bagology. I truly believe that because they are damn good at it. Just be careful. Just be careful out here. But anyway, girly, let me go ahead and get this makeup and stuff done so we can get these sponsorships filmed and uh, we can go on to the next thing. All right, girl, we're getting ready to film a sponsorship. I have to put on my heels. You guys know that I am going to give you some behind the scenes tips. Um, well, no, I'm sorry, not no behind the scenes tips. You guys know that I'm gonna give you some behind the scenes, you know, footage or whatever. So I'm just putting on my heels. Oh, girl. And then I had to like, oh, uh-uh. Baby, it's the struggle shoe, okay. All right. Let me get this shoe on. All right, and then we gotta go back and make sure that, um, girl, let me pull these pants up. Y'all see all of the shit that go on behind the scenes of these during sponsorships. It's a lot, guys. It is, it's a lot. Last week and they already, 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 already
came in with that F thing. Two girls with him tell me you got a preference. I'm both bound to ask a few questions. That last week and they already best friends. Already best friends. Yeah. That last week and they already best friends. Y'all niggas playin' with me, man She's a Georgia State freshman Told her I'm a fool, bitch, you play that damn Girl, you look good, I would risk everything Make me forget what safe sex is I'ma finish right now I don't take breaks in I recommend you don't listen to your friends Shit ain't been the same since they stepped in 25 deep in the same section I'm off, I get you off, yeah Tell me this ain't something that you do often I can't say the same, so use caution Just call just so What you studying? Education, that's where the money is You think you're funny, huh? Yeah, I'm the funniest So what about you? A friend replied, I don't go to school Okay, what you do? I'm a dancer A quick question, are you a cancer? I said, hell nah, where you dance at? She said, blue flame, that should be damn crack I said, damn facts, so where your man at? All right, y'all, so we are finished with that sponsorship And now we're getting ready to do the next one The next one is going to be a wig So... When I do my wig sponsorships, I always like to have on a really pretty top, <clears throat> like a really pretty top. Um, and I'm actually dressed from head to toe. The reason why I'm, I have to dress from head to toe now is because that seat that we have in the beauty room, girl, the seat sit up super high. It sits up real high. So basically, you can't really... Um, you know, I can't really put the jargon pants on with a real cute shirt because you're going to see, you know, from you'll, you're going to see everything. So I'm just putting on a little bit of this Neutrogena oil because it actually really does look nice on camera. So I'm putting that on. We already obviously have the makeup done. And then um, let me see if I need to. I might do a little bit more because, guys, this wig that I'm about to do is like a bob wig. And so with it being a bob wig, you know, you're going to have, you know, you're going to have everything kind of just out. But I don't want to do, I don't want to overdo it too, too much. So let me try to, baby, let me try to bring some of this down. All right, there we go. Girl, y'all, it be so much that goes into filming content. And y'all, I do have on a bra, but I just kind of tucked it in because I don't, you know, I don't want the bra to be showing. You know when um i'm doing the sponsorship so yeah girl so anyway it'd be a lot that go into this stuff girl but that's okay because girl this is what get the bills paid but anyway let me show you guys what i have on so we have on this super cute satin top guys i got this satin top when i first 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 started youtube a company reached out to me and they was like we just want to send you some clothes so they sent me this and then y'all y'all know these cute pants these are from shein i purchased these cute leather pants from shein i like the back because they got the the, the little camo situation i mean the what's the name it is What's the name of this girl? Cargo. They got the cargo pockets on the back. So I like that. Super cute. So yeah, girly. But anyway, let me. This is the stuff that they want me to read up on, girl. So I got to read up on the, the briefs and the, the details about the wig. So I'm going to read up on this stuff real quick. And then we about to get started with this sponsorship. And when I come back, we'll talk and hang out and stuff like that. Y'all know what? I just realized I can actually uh, talk to y'all while we're getting everything set up. So I just read the deliverables and it's really not much because it's only like a three minute commercial. So it's not a three minute, uh, uh, a three minute video. So it's really not too much that they want me to do. So that's fine. All right, girl, I'm trying to put this stuff up. Let me see. See, I have to do this to make sure that I have enough clearance and there are no products showing and whatever is on the table is behind the table. And then I'm trying to position it where, um, so the mirror is back there. Yeah, the clearance is here. Let me push this over. All right, so let me we can see what's in this box 
okay i'm just making sure i'm just going through the boxes uh that they sent me to make sure that there is not there's not anything that needs to be shown and it's really not i mean honestly girl they just sent some bobby pins and stuff like that over so we're okay on that let me try to tidy this up a little bit okay yeah girl so baby y'all this is a job with it itself you know what i'm saying so if you want to be uh a content creator then just know that this is just a job within itself it is it does have its whoo shoots it does have its reward but um i'm still like i'm still in like the learning curve phase i'm still in the phase where i'm still learning and stuff like that and um i'm just still getting used to everything but uh it can't it can be a lot you know, putting yourself out there, you know, for people's scrutiny and stuff, even when, you know, even when you're just trying to do the right thing, you know what I'm saying? You're not uh, trying to harm anybody. You just trying to do the right thing, girl. You still get criticized, you know, so there is criticism that comes with this. But what outweighs the criticism is just... Um, you know, still moving forward. I've no, I've noticed like still picking up the camera, still recording. You know what I'm saying? That outweighs the criticism because it shows people that you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna stop and you're not gonna go away. But um, you know, it can be tough or whatever. Um, but uh, another thing that does kind of help, you know, it does over or outweigh the criticism is when you know you guys send so many positive messages you know telling me that i inspire you or when you tell your favorite influencer that they inspire you guys y'all don't know how uplifting that is that's really really uplifting you know and so that's what keeps me going you know keeping me you know i try to stay on task with my with my purpose i'm gonna be honest to y'all um I'm really trying to continue or I'm trying to get to the point where I'm still picking up the camera, even when I'm not doing anything, because guys, that is my real life. You know what I'm saying? And I know I get in my head sometimes or, you know, I've heard people say things like, oh, that's boring or, oh, that's a snooze fest. But guys, this is real life. Every day in my life ain't going to be lit. I'm, and also, guys, y'all have to, under not y'all, not y'all, but y'all. Not y'all, but y'all, you know, they have to understand or, you know, something, sometimes people just have to understand, guys, I came from, I come from a fairly conservative background. I'm fairly conservative. Yeah, you know, I started off as a little, you know what I'm saying, a little trap queen. Yeah, my life did start off like that as a teen and, you know, scamming and stuff like that in college. But guys, you grow out of that. That's been many, many moons ago. And, you know, my life is not, it's not just like this super lit life, guys. It's, it's not. And what I show you, what I show y'all, it's real life, you know. And, and um, you know, and I know my content and everybody's content is not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? My content is not for everybody. And I know it's, if, if you know, if it's people that's like looking for to me to be lit and stuff like that baby it ain't gonna be lit all the time you know you know i'll dance do a little do a little one two step here and there and stuff like that but guys this is just my everyday life you know um i am simply someone who left corporate america y'all know my story i left corporate america because shit the bottom line is i got tired of interviewing and not getting the job and then I came onto YouTube, you know, and that's my story. And so what I show you is really real life. And girl, sometimes in real life, we don't have a whole lot of shit going on. You know, you're going to get your oil changed. You're cleaning up your house. You're washing dishes. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, you're going to a little concert here and there. And guys, my real life, what I do behind the scenes, I love trying on clothes. I love playing in makeup. I love playing in my hair. Y'all, that's my real life, and so that's what I show. Um, so yeah, um, and to be honest with you, it had you know that had kind of been, I've been wanting to get that off my chest because you know I definitely heard people say that I was boring or that I was a snooze fest, and yeah, 
I mean, I am bored and I am a snooze fest to people who, you know, may not be interested in content in regards to career, you know, trying to get your resume together. You know what I'm saying? Really trying to evolve in life. Yeah, if you're not on that, I agree. I might be a snooze fest if you ain't on that. But if you're trying to evolve and you're, you know, you've grown past things or you're trying to grow past certain things, you're looking for a little bit of relationship advice here and there. You know what I'm saying? We talking about these old clown ass dudes out here. Then, you know, there it is. But you know, I just told myself, like, Rochelle, you don't have to, like, run from the camera because you're not doing anything. Or you don't have to be fearful of picking up the camera because it's not a whole lot of shit going on in fear of people like, oh, this is boring. This is boring. So everyone offers a different experience. You know what I'm saying? And so you guys are going to have the bombshell experience over here, you know, if you decide to come in and sit down. You know what I'm saying? We are about to let me take this wig off because you know all right let's take this wig off girl uh-uh girl it's giving is you a boy oh you know what wait a minute girl i was gonna say let's rotate the wig cap but girl we don't have to do uh-uh oh, not the wig cap flying across the room girl i'm dead but y'all we don't have to rotate this wig cap because it's a bang wig baby not the bang all right girly so let me get back into my professional voice let's get back into the professional voice and uh let's go ahead and get this uh content filmed and i'ma call y'all back <laughs> Ooh, we need to get this makeup room together so y'all listen 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 girl my mama tried it. She come calling over here, you know, because tomorrow is her birthday. So she called me and I was just trying to, you know, figure out, you know, what she wanted to do tomorrow. So some kind of way we started talking about, um, you know, I don't know. She was talking about like a, a co-worker or something. And she was just like, um, yeah, she's like a fourth daughter to me. I said, wait a minute. And I was like, what? Girl, I immediately got an attitude because I, I, I do get jealous. I don't want my mama to be out here, you know, trying to act like other people, her daughter. So, girl, I know one time, and this was, I was home from college this particular time. She come coming home. She gonna come home bragging about some guy she met. And the girl name was, um... Was it a, uh, it was a Veronica, like Veronica, but with an A. And she was coming home, yes, Veronica. Like, girl, she gonna come home with some flowers one day. And I was like, where you get them flowers? And Veronica gave them to me. She's so sweet. She's like, uh, she's like a fourth daughter. Really? Baby, I went up there the next day when my mama went to work. Cause see, the girl named Veronica was a florist at this store called Randall's. So, baby, I went up there to Randall's. I literally walked up there, y'all. This was a long time ago. This is before I could even, even knew how to drive. Baby, I walked up to Randall's, and I was just like, you know, I broke that shit up. I broke that shit up, and I was just like, that's not your mother. My mom is not your mom. See, here's how this shit is going to work. You have your mom, and I have my mom. My mom belongs to me, and your mom belongs to you and so i hadn't heard my mom talk about the girl for a couple of weeks or whatever now i ain't seen that i had went up to randall's and ran the girl off but i just had to let her know because my thing is like girl why are you out here trying to like be friends with my mama and stuff she not gonna be buying you nothing like why are you trying to be friends with her you know what i'm saying shit i had to go mafia on that ass but anyway um i had noticed like my mama wasn't talking about the girl no more or whatever and so I had just casually asked about it. I was like, girl, so, um, girl, where Veronica, where your little friend Veronica at? She was like, I don't know. I have no idea. She, she's not at Randall's anymore. I, I, I don't know. So I ain't saying I made the girl quit, but I'm just letting y'all know, like, sis, don't be out here trying to steal my mama from me. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, dude, she got another friend, girl. And so I was just like, I oh, don't know. I don't want my mama being friends with people my age. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know. They may be a bad impression on her. Because I know one time. <laughs> 
Girl, y'all, one time, my mama had started hanging out with these ladies and stuff at work. And girl, she was coming home and she was cussing and stuff. And I had to run them hoes off. And I was like, and she started dressing different. And I was like, what's going on with you? Like, what is going on, girl? Come to find out she was hanging out with these old girl, just these girls at work or whatever. I y'all, I am so overprotective of my mama. I know that that sounds crazy, but I was just like, like it, like the change in her. And then like the way that she was cussing, like she, cause like my mom isn't like a cussed per se. You know, my mama, the way she be cussing, she used to just be like, get your damn hell hands out of my pots. Like she wasn't like a cussed. So girl, she started like using cuss words and you know what I'm saying? They was flowing off her tongue, but it was like the way she was using them. You know, she's like, oh, that motherfucker this and I was like, wait a minute. You don't be using no strong cuss words and stuff, girl. So yeah, I had to break that shit up. Y'all, don't be letting y'all mama be out here being friends with these old fast ladies and stuff on their job, girl. And don't be letting no girls that you don't know be out here trying to like act like, you know, I'm steal your mama from you, girl. Y'all better go break that shit up. If y'all got to go to the local Randall's or H-E-B or Piggly Wiggly, wherever you live, and go break that shit up, take it from me. Because it's like... The next thing you know, they be trying to be friends with your mama. And then the next thing you know, she be giving them money and buying them stuff. Because that didn't happen to my grandmother before my grandmother passed, girl. She used to work at this grocery store. And then um, she had met this little girl or whatever. And girl, the little girl was coming in there and telling my grandmother all these sob stories. Like I said earlier, she was dry begging. You know, like, oh, my children need some milk. My children need some typhus. They need some pampers. They need powder. They need... And it was just like, before I knew it, every time I look up, my grandmother was buying this, buying that, buying that, or whatever. So she eventually caught on, you know, and just kind of, you know, you know, just kind of like stop helping a little girl out or whatever. But y'all got to be careful because, girl, these, baby, these people something else. But anyway, girl... Y'all, let me get... And see, the vlog wasn't even supposed to go like that. I was supposed to talk to y'all about something else. But anyway, girl. Y'all, let me get this beauty room back together. I need to edit these... Um, I need to edit these sponsorships. And uh, hopefully, if I have enough energy, I'll come back and talk to y'all tonight. I...
y'all. So we're getting ready to run errands. I wanted to show y'all what I'm wearing. So girl, just some tennis shoes. I don't know what kind of tennis shoes these are. They're Nikes, I know that much. Some leather like leggings, workout leggings. This cute little um, Celine top. You guys seen this earlier in the vlog. And this is my makeup look. Y'all know the drill, honey. Y'all know the makeup is always the same pretty much. But yeah, girly, so we're just gonna go and run some errands. Um, I need to take them pictures, them sculptures back to Ross, so we might do that. And then I need to get some groceries. You know, just just the, the Sunday thing. All right, y'all. I wanted to show y'all some of the stuff that I'm buying. So, um... I'm eating the same things, but I'm eating it differently, if that makes sense. Like, I know you guys knew that I had this huge thing with cucumbers and olives, but I'm starting to eat that. I eat it still, but I eat it differently, meaning I don't eat it together. And I'm going to be honest, y'all, I'm noticing, I've noticed a pretty uh, big difference in my waistline. And so it's went down a little bit, which is always good. And, and that's also because I'm trying to you know, experiment and incorporate different foods into my diet. So, of course, I'm still getting the infamous cucumbers. Let me turn this around. So y'all, I still buy the cucumbers, um, but what I've added to my diet, um, I eat chicken, like I'm gonna probably make this chicken in the crock pot. Um, I've always loved beans, and so these are these baked beans. And then, of course, we're still getting more cucumbers over here. But I'm also like adding stuff like bacon and uh, these noodles. These are actually really, really good. Now, guys, for me, this is going to be like a combination of two meals. So this is like two meals, maybe three meals for me. Um, I've added tortillas and guys, I've, I'm eating breakfast now. I typically would not eat breakfast, but that's been a huge difference in my waistline. So I'm eating breakfast now, but I'm also adding in tortillas. And um, of course, bread. Now I don't eat a lot of bread, guys. It's probably gonna take me maybe like, I don't know, maybe a month and a half to go through this entire loaf of bread. In fact, it's gonna take me probably three months maybe four to go through these tortillas because I don't I don't eat them every single day um, and then of course we have the infamous olives so I like these these are my favorite so I eat these but now I'm eating them with like when I make my pasta the noodles I showed you guys I eat the olives with that um, I am noticing a difference and then another thing that I've started doing guys y'all know I have I like I love sweets like if y'all didn't know that now you know but anyway I love sweets and so what I'm doing at night just to kind of see if this is going to help me get my waistline down or whatever is instead of like you know going downstairs and going to get Oreos what I do now is I um hi <laughs> instead of me going downstairs and getting like Oreos and stuff girl I just eat a couple of olives another thing that I've I've started doing is I've added organic uh, bananas and so like I'll go to Trader Joe's and I'll add some I'll get some bananas and I'll add that to my diet or whatever and so it's just been it's it's been small changes but I've just noticed a really, you know, a, a pretty significant difference in my waistline, girl. And so, you know, baby, we always trying to keep the waistline down, not just for aesthetics. You know, it's not like I'm just trying to keep my waistline down just for aesthetics, but just for health reasons. It's good to, you know, try to get your waistline down. So if I have any of you guys out there, if y'all struggle like I do with sweets and you love sweets, girl, try this little trick, bruh. Try this little trick or whatever. Um you know add something like pickles or something salty into your diet and so instead of reaching for something sweet reach for something salty and see if that'll take care of your your sweet tooth uh, so anyway um i think i'm about to buy this dr teal's i'm thinking i'm thinking i'm gonna get this this right here i have some already yeah we're gonna get this we'll get this or whatever so all right so we are almost finished um 
Now let me say this. I probably need to. I should have said this disclaimer before I showed you guys what's in my basket. Guys, these are the foods that work for me. Y'all know that I struggle with keeping weight on. I have a big issue. Like my weight drops very fast. And so I do tend to lean towards food food that have a little bit more fat in it because that's what works for my diet but guys it th these products may not work for your diet so um try to get things that if, if it works for you a little bit leaner on the fat like i wouldn't tell you guys to go get whole fat tortillas and stuff like this i buy that stuff again because i do struggle with keeping weight on okay and so i think right now um i'm at like 152 I think I was at 156 last month and I was so excited. <laughs> I was all excited, girl, because I was feeling like a big old thick fine stallion. And then um, recently I weighed myself and now I'm down to 152. So I do have a, it is a struggle keeping my weight on. And uh, I just think I look better. I think I look better at a, you know, with a little bit more weight on me. But anyway, so those are just some of my little tips I wanted to share with you guys. And uh, hopefully they work. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you guys when we get to the next store. All right, y'all, I am finally back, girl. Y'all, I didn't been to Marshall's. <laughs> I have been to Ross and now I didn't pulled up on the, um, on a little barbecue thing because we're about to get some chicken but yeah girly so y'all i was just on the phone with my best friend and i was telling her asking i was asking her had she ever heard of someone being geographically unattractive because i had recently read like reasons why you know reasons why men or women could be turned off from someone and some of the people participating in the poll they were just saying like you know the person was geographically unattractive like oh i didn't like the neighborhood that this person lived in so on and so forth and that reminded me of this guy that i dated so i met one night i went out this was years ago and me and a friend of mine went out to like this little sports bar thing these two guys they were at the table they sent us some shots and so they sent us some shots and then we went over to the table we had drinks with them the guy that I was talking to was a really 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 nice guy super successful guy but um you know I we went on a date and he was one of those guys who like he loved like like talking on the phone being booed up on the phone being booed up like on the um the FaceTime thing really nice dude or whatever so anyway, um, he was asking me, you know, we were talking about coming over to, you know, people's houses. I had to make sure, is this bitch recording? Because sometimes I don't be knowing if it's recording. But anyway, so anyway, um, we were talking about, you know, going over people's houses because he was asking me, why was I single? And at the time I was like, well, honestly, and guys, this is when I lived in my old apartment, the one that burned down. I was like, well, honestly, I'm single because I don't like where I live. And it's like, he was like taken back that I said that. And he was like, wow. And he was like, no one has ever been that honest before. Like the fact that you were just that honest. And then after, after he said that, he was just like, just that statement alone makes you better than half of the people I've even met because people just don't say that you know he was like everybody want to make it look like they have it all together even the girls everybody want to make it look like everything is perfect they own a boss shit if they got it all together and so he was after so after he said that he was like listen the right man for you is not gonna judge you based off of the neighborhood that you live in like it's just some shit that don't matter and that doesn't that doesn't matter but I still felt a way but anyway um so after that like I, I appreciated him saying that because guys he lived in this beautiful neighborhood so guys y'all know i live in houston and we have a neighborhood it's the galleria area and around the galleria area they have all these high rises and stuff and like he lived in one of those very swanky upscale high rises beautiful home and when you went in his home it was all white white marble white sofa white everything white just all white you know what i'm saying all white jeans all white belt pull up on the scene goddamn apartment looking like milk but anyway <laughs> but the apartment was just all white and then like his bedroom door like he had his 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 door open to his room and it's like 
it looked like the hotel or the bed was made like you guys know how they make ho uh, make beds in really like more upscale hotels the bed was made like they're just like a beautiful beautiful place or whatever and so i think we might have went out on one or two dates and then after that we just didn't go out on you know we just didn't go out on any more dates because for me i wasn't I don't know. I just wasn't in a headspace to be in a relationship. And, you know, I didn't want to be like, I don't know. I just felt like he was a nice dude. But it, I could tell, like, he probably had so many different girls or whatever. And he was, he was dating. And that's fair. You know, he was dating and testing out the water and stuff like that or whatever. But I didn't want to be a part of a lineup. And then also, guys, I wasn't ready to be intimate you know i wasn't ready to be in a, a sexual relationship I, that's just not something that i was ready for and then also um another thing with him he was a nice dude but he wasn't the kind of guy that was going to put money in your pocket and what i mean by that is like if anything was going to happen financially uh from him to you he was going to pull up and do it like if he was going to pay to get your hair done he was pulling up to the shop and he was paying the lady to do your hair if he um if you wanted to get your nails done he wasn't giving you the money he wasn't cash apping you he pulling up to the shop he gonna get a lady the money to do your nails you know if you want to eat lunch if you're not eating lunch with him he's not giving you money to eat lunch he gonna pull up to the thing and gonna pay the people for you to eat the lunch you know what i'm saying and so i don't know i kind of felt like that was uh you know potentially he could be a little bit controlling but anyway i say all of that to say like i do admire the fact that you know, he, he was like, man, don't none of that stuff matter. Like the right guy, don't none of that stuff matter to me. None of, none of that stuff matters to the right guy. I like that he said that. And then also like I've met guys who, um, you know, they put a lot of stock into the type of career and the profession that you have. You know, it's like, it just feels like the roles have reversed in a sense. Like, you know, I've met guys that be like, oh yeah, my ex was a CEO and my ex was a CFO and my ex was a, was a doctor and she was this, my ex was a dentist and was a dean and all of this type of stuff or whatever. And it's just like, you know, you here I come I've been laid off three times and I'm still trying to figure this shit out and so it would it it, it literally just felt like the roles reversed it's just like you know it just feels like now men want the way that I feel and I could be wrong in fact this is something I want to be wrong about but I feel like sometimes like the guys that I've met they want women with real established careers like you know what I'm saying the the president of 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 wells fargo bank like they want women to have these super established jobs these executive jobs or whatever and, and i'm like shit i'm pulling up to the function you know in hustle mode you know what i'm saying shit you get laid off enough and i talk about this but you gonna pull up to the thing in in, in hustle mode and it's like shit this is who i am and this is what i have to offer you know i'm, I'm not coming to the thing passing all business cards and shit like that or whatever and so i don't know it's just um you know i guess this is a conversation just about feeling like you know realizing like you are enough and like the guy was saying he would like he was saying like for the right person you will be enough you know your what you choose to do as a profession is enough you know um and it is but i've even had a guy tell me like well what he had going on like he couldn't really afford to be with someone who was kind of, you know, just getting their career, like getting started, like in the influencer world or in the, you know, I don't tell guys exactly what I do. I will tell them that I'm just a content. I'm not just, but I'll tell them I'm a content creator. But, you know, he wanted someone that was like really in their career established and you know had what he considers to be a real job you know because he was just saying for the life he has and the life that he wants and so on and so forth like he needs someone who has a definite certain uh uh salary and so it's crazy because it's just like I'm not here to prove myself to you and and you know shit like Wales Fantasia say if you don't want me then don't talk to me go ahead and free yourself and so i just 
I don't know, but it definitely, guys, it's feeling like the roles are reversing. Like men are out here and they looking for the, the, the bosses. They looking for the CEOs, the CFOs. They looking for the, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the big, the high dollar chicks or whatever. That's what, that's what they looking for. That's what it seems like, you know, but it's, it's a trip. And then on the other hand, I've met guys who, they think like if you tell them that you're a content creator, I don't know why they mind go this way, but girl, they immediately start thinking OnlyFans. They're not thinking anything wholesome. They're thinking like you literally online doing OnlyFans and doing something sexual and something salacious. And so, you know, they'll run a, they'll run away from that or they'll run away from the idea of like, you know, I don't want, I don't want a chick, you know, that's like in the public eye in terms of that type of creating content but they never really you know dial in to see to even see what you know the the content creator life in entails but yeah girl i just wanted to like i just wanted to like get that off my chest or whatever because it does feel like this this world of dating is ever evolving and uh you know just when you start thinking about the reasons why you either date or why you don't you know, and I, I and oh, another thing I wanted to tell y'all, y'all, I feel like I have made every excuse in the world to stop dating. Initially, my excuse used to be, I don't like where I live. Well, you guys, look where we live now, this gorgeous, beautiful place. But now it's like, I don't want to date because I'm going to be honest. Y'all don't judge me, but I don't want to have sex. <laughs> I don't want to right now be intimate. I don't want to, I don't, I just don't want to be intimate right now with a guy. Um, I mean, and I know when you're dating, you don't have to do that or whatever, but I don't want, I don't, because I know at some point sex is going to come up. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to be, I just don't want to, I just don't, that's just not, I don't want to share my bed. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to share my bed and I don't, you know, and then when you like start, you get into having sex and stuff like that, it's like, I don't want somebody expecting that from me. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know. It's just a lot of shit that that's just not something, that's just not where I am right now. You know, I don't, I don't want to be intimate with anybody right now. And I think it's just because, you know, I just want, I want more than that. And what I, but what I do love is like, I got control over that. I have control over the way that I want shit to go. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I don't think it's anything wrong with going out to a little dinner here or there or whatever, but in terms of just getting really intimate with someone, I don't want that. You know, because I'm not nobody's goddamn mattress or a mule. You know what I'm saying? You ain't finna come over my house and, and you know, be feeding me to my mattress. <laughs> Take your girl and kidnap her. Feed her to my mattress. I don't want to be, I just don't feel like, um, I, I don't, mm -mm. I just don't want, I want, if I'm gonna be with someone, I want the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be a roll in the hay and none of that shit. I want the whole thing. I want a whole, full, complete, committed, monogamous, monogamous relationship. But anyway, it's almost my turn to order this food girl. Now, hopefully, y'all know I love coming to Papa's Barbecue. Um, and hopefully they won't, I'm gonna tell them to please separate my food because the last time they tried they tried to play with me. But anyway, girl, let me get this food and I'm gonna call y'all when I get home. All right, y'all, let me show y'all what I got from Marshall's. So we got these volume curl essential rollers. And that's because I actually closed a deal with the company for a gorgeous wig. And I just kind of want the wig to have like these sexy, big voluminous curls, kind of like um, Victoria's Secret's hair, that type of thing. So I knew I was gonna need some of these to achieve that look. So I got these. And then I got some coconut oil. And I wanted this because even though the wigs that they send me, they have like a natural shine to them. Sometimes they need a little bit of help, girl. So I figured I would get this. And then we got an edge stick. I just wanted to, oh shoot, I hope I messed this up. I just wanted to try this edge control stick because 
the ones that I buy cost about $15 on uh, Amazon. And I didn't want to spend $15 again. So I was like, let me just try something. So I'm going to let you guys know how this works. And then, last but not least, we purchased this retinol night. This is like a night oil for your face. So I decided that I would purchase this and try it. I heard retinol is really, really good for you. Um, you know, it kind of helps you with those fine lines and stuff like that. So yeah, girl. Um, I bought some stuff for the room, but I'm like, do y'all really want to see that? I guess I can show you. Let me go get it. So I bought this pillow. Uh, so when I'm in the bed, you know, I'm not just, you know, at a, at a complete, um, you know, I'm still kind of sitting up, you know what I'm saying? And I just wanted this. You know, because I just wanted some comfort instead of like stacking my pillows and stuff. So I was like, yeah, let me grab that. And then I have I have some other pillows for the bed. Hold on, let me go get those. I bought these soft touch pillows for the bed because um, I wanted something bigger. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted some bigger pillows or whatever. Girl, y'all can't can y'all even see me? I wanted some bigger pillows for the bed. So I bought these. All right, girl, I am back. I had to go downstairs and get these shoes. Girl, they better not be, uh-uh. Girl, these shoes better not be worn either. Because I've been here and the girl has been saying, okay, they not worn. Y'all, I got these super cute shoes from um, Amazon, girl, for $39. Y'all know these been $80 on DSW forever in a day. I just have to try them on and make sure that they fit good. But y'all, they so cute. They look, they actually look better than I expected. But yeah, girl, the girls, the res was saying that they was worn when they got them. So yeah, um, so I'm gonna try this on, baby. My feet look, y'all, my feet look awful because I get like acrylic on my toe like a tip with acrylic over it and I accidentally hit my toe on the on the cabinet in the kitchen and baby both of the toes is cracked up you know what I'm saying so yeah girl these are so cute I love these yes girly and then I also ordered these and these are just some makeup wipes I love keeping this type of stuff like um you know in the makeup area so um yeah girl so let me try this shoe on now listen hopefully the shoe will fit cute oh uh-uh girl okay yeah they did i was gonna say did they said hopefully it'll fit cute i'm i'm not gonna show y'all because baby these feet no ma'am that's why i was wearing tennis shoes today because normally a day like this i would have just put some flip-flops on but you know, I just didn't want my feet out like that. So hopefully, guys, we can get a nail appointment tomorrow. So that'll be good. All right, girl, let me try this shoe on. Oh, let's see what we got. Okay, let me try the other one on. And they do. Somebody said they ran small, but she and she. Well, yeah, girl. Whoever said that on the Amazon review did not lie. They do run small. Now, y'all, like I said, this is a nine and a half. I'm going to link the shoe below, by the way, girl. So, this is a nine and a half. I normally wear a nine. So, yeah, it do run a little bit small. But lately, I've been getting my heels in a nine and a half because, you know, when your foot, when you stand up and your feet spread out and stuff or whatever, you got to account for that. So, hold on. Let me try this other one on. We got to make sure that we can walk in them. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to look like no baby deer. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be walking like a baby goat. Oh, okay. Let me see. It is giving baby deer. I don't know. I just feel like... I just... I don't know. They don't feel... They don't feel kind of like sturdy like the J-Lo shoes normally do. They just feel... They just feel like wobbly, 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 wobbly. What he say? Drop it like it's hot. That's what they feel like. It feel like if I walk too much longer, I'm going to end up dropping it like it's hot. And it's not going to be intentional. I don't know. Okay. Oh, you know what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know what I just thought about? Let me buckle the shoe up. Hold on, girl. Okay. There we go. So, yeah, you get a little bit more. They feel a little bit more... Um, let me 
me take this Mr. Rogers ass sweater off, girl. Hold on. Okay. They feel a little bit better when you buckle them up, but I just don't feel... I'm sorry, but it's just something with the heel. It just don't feel... I don't know, girl. I'm probably going to say, damn, these was cute and they the perfect... Let me put this right here. They cute and they the perfect nude. Oh, I'm pissed, y'all. This is the perfect nude for the black bras. Dang. I'm mad. Okay, so y'all, this is what we gonna do. I'm gonna try the shoe on again tomorrow just to see, you know, how I feel about it. So let me put these down here. In fact, I'm gonna put them back in a box. Right now, I can honestly say that my feet are hurting. And the reason why my feet are hurting is because I've been wearing tennis shoes all day. And honestly, my feet are not, my feet just not used to tennis shoes. So we gonna try, we gonna try the heels again tomorrow after my feet feel a little bit more rested. Cause I don't wanna give up on these immediately because it's just hard. Like y'all look at that color, that nude color. That is like the perfect nude for me. Dang, I ain't want to send these back. Um, I'm sad. Hmm. But yeah, girl, so let me put this over here. And I just want to take me, y'all, I just, I think what I'm about to do, I'm, what's that noise? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, y'all, that's the... <laughs> That's the people picking up the trash, girl. But wait a minute, let me fix this thing. So what I think I am about to do, I'm probably about to run me a nice hot shower and drink me some tea. What time is it? Girl, it's 9.43. So this vlog is probably not gonna be out until Tuesday. Um, I don't know if I have enough footage. But if I don't, we'll just, this blog will go into tomorrow, which is, that's fine. But anyway, girly, um, oh, wait a minute, girl. Uh-uh, wait a minute. We need to talk. We need to talk. I forgot to tell y'all, girl. Have y'all watched the Murdoch, the Murdoch series on, uh, I think it's on Netflix, girl, where the man and went and killed up his wife and his child, his son and his wife. Girl, I said, look at this damn redheaded stepchild, girl. They were seeing like his family's legacy had been established for a hundred years. And he basically, in a matter of a few years, they he destroyed the legacy. But basically, the son killed somebody. To me, in my opinion, the mama killed the, the, the to me, the mama killed the house the 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 housekeeper. The other son, they said, they're speculating that he hurt, he killed someone. And then the dad killed the mom and the son. And I'm like, so the Murdoch, they, they pronounced the last name Murdoch. And now I thought it was Murdoch, but it's Murdoch, Murdoch, I guess, whatever, the H with the H. But I'm like, but y'all some murderers. But it's just like, damn, you, I, I and, it, and I think when he committed the murder, he was like, 53 maybe I don't really know but I'm like what made him do that like what made him like of all of the years like what was in his brain to make him decide that he wanted to off his son and his wife and I was like wow uh, you know what though but I found out because I watched a special on HBO too girl they said that um he had gotten divorced from his his him and his wife was getting ready to get a divorce she wasn't even living at the house and she had sent someone a text message saying like something is off he's up to something or whatever so yeah girl um i thought that that was i thought that was pretty interesting or whatever so if you guys have not had a chance to watch that y'all watch that and then girl another thing i want y'all to watch girl because this is what had me in a chokehold for the last three days girl this is why I hadn't picked up the camera in three days because I've been over here in the chokehold watching this series on Nip, I mean on uh HBO Max called Succession. Girl, when I tell y'all that is such a good series, it's three, it's three seasons. 
and the fourth season should be coming back at the end of this month. But girl, basically, it's, it's about this uh, like this wealthy family, and it's a lot of scandal. The only thing that threw me was like when I first watched season one, it was very comical. It was on the lines of kind of like com comical. And I saw that Will Ferrell was like one of the producers or whatever. But then as the seasons progressed, I noticed that it wasn't as funny. Like they got one brother, girl, he'd be cracking jokes on it, girl. He'd be wearing their asses out with them jokes. <laughs> but anyway, um, I noticed that it wasn't as funny. But by then, girl, you'd be so hooked. You you be so hooked by the end of the season, you just you just go along with it. And then last but not least, another series I want you guys to get into is Industry. Industry is very good. It's about this uh, young lady, this young black lady. I think she goes to London and she works, I want to say, in the stock market or in the banking industry. And uh, it's surrounded by a lot of salacious sex and, you know, salaciousness. And it's a really good series or whatever. So, yeah. So, y'all make sure that you guys... Uh, watch those if you have watched them let me know in the comment section how you like them but anyway if the blog is not long enough um i'll pick you guys back up in the morning and then we'll go run some errands and uh take care of some some things that we need to take care of hey. Hey.